Welcome to session two on the 2023 National Weather Service Milwaukee Sullivan Storm Spotter Training Sessions. This one is going to focus on weather information. So before you go out and storm spot, you need to know whether or not there's going to be a chance of severe thunderstorms that day or things that you need to report on to us. So there's a lot of good sources for weather information. So we're going to go through that so that you can be as prepared as possible for when the storms do occur. So one of the first things we tell people is just have a professional source for weather information. We'll start with us. We are part of the federal government, as we've mentioned. Our job is just to provide people with information on the severe weather that's going to occur when we think things are going to happen in southern Wisconsin. So we uh, we are just tasked with that to try to keep people safe. So you can start with us with any weather information. Another good group that is uh, very informative when it comes to weather information is our local TV meteorologists. A lot of these meteorologists have gone to the same schools that us at the National Weather Service have gone to, and uh, they have a, a good in-depth knowledge of the area as well, particularly when it becomes a severe weather situation and they're doing live cut-ins and things like that. You can get play-by-play -play information on the storms to gauge how far away they are and what the risk is for some of the different areas. Uh, so highly recommend following along with uh, your favorite TV meteorologist or multiple TV meteorologists and find out what their take is on a situation to help you be aware of what's what's coming through. Private sector also has meteorologists that provide information that's very specific for a location. So um, if you have a very if you have a business or something like that that really needs some more detailed information, you can uh, go with the private sector as well. We also recommend using technology. The forecast changes as we get closer and closer to it when we know more and more about the details of that event. So please uh, you know, pay attention to the latest forecasts, the technology that's out there with cell phone apps and we, uh, the social media, internet. There's a lot of information out there so you can brief yourself and get spun up on what's happening in case you're not paying attention to the weather and something fluky happens like last October when we had tornadoes on a day where we weren't expecting it. So there's a lot of information on our website. If you go to weather.gov and then you can either type in slash Milwaukee or slash Madison, or you can click on the map from weather.gov and that'll bring you down to our local page. So there's a lot of great information on this page. So we're gonna go just over a few bits of information. So I'll start with the forecast. If you ever just wanna get a forecast, you just type in the city here or you can click on the map and you'll get a detailed forecast for your location. However, it typically will not have a severe weather forecast on that uh, for what comes up. It'll just say chance of thunderstorms, but it won't say whether or not there's a chance of severe thunderstorms. So there's different spots you gotta go to to be able to get that information. So one of the things you can remember to do is just click on the Skywarn spotter page. If you go down to hazards here and then click on Skywarn, you'll get a page that looks like this with all the different uh, links and everything, all the important stuff that we talk about in the spotter training session. So you can go back to this. You'll, this is where we'll ho host all these, uh, the playlist for this year, as well as past years as well. If you want some extra training for the storm spotter, stuff that we talk about. Discussions, if you mouse over forecasts, you're gonna get a very technical discussion about what we think is gonna happen with the weather pattern. Uh, we might get a little bit into model analysis or some of the environmental aspects that are around with the severe weather events. So you might learn a few new words reading through these discussions, but it's another resource if you wanna hear what the meteorologist is thinking about a, a certain severe weather event or whatever it might be. Hazardous weather outlook, if you mouse over the current hazards, you'll get this enhanced experimental graphical hazardous weather outlook. You click on that. Otherwise, you can also click on where it says hazardous weather outlook. If our area is in a beige color here, uh, you can click on that. That'll take you there. We'll talk a little bit more in depth about the hazardous weather outlook in a little bit. The weather story in the event uh, packet PDF. So the first thing, the weather story down here, this is a graphic that our meteorologists try to draw up to show if there's one or two things that's going on with the weather, what's those, what are those main things that are happening? 
So when there's severe weather going on, we want to try to message what we think is going to happen with the severe weather event. So when's it going to occur? What's the likelihood that it's going to occur? What are the weather types that are going to occur with it? Things like that. We try to put it into this one graphic. and We use maps for uh, where the most likely areas are to get that severe weather. So know where you live on a map and where you live on a county so that uh, you can understand that information well. <clears throat> When we do have a lot of things going on, we'll have uh, a, a weather story uh, packet, this event PDF packet that'll be up in the top right-hand corner. It's just a briefing where there's a lot of different things going on and it's hard to talk about it in one slide. We'll try to, we'll put it into a slide deck like this and you can download it as a PDF and share with all your friends and let them know what it looks like is going to occur. Submitting a storm report, you can mouse over current hazards, and then you can click on submit a storm report, which will take you to this page. And you can see there's five options there for where you can send a report to us. So we'll go through most of these uh, during the spotter training session. And then radar, you can click on this here. We have our uh, updated radar page, which will show locally, and then you can also look nationally for uh, mosaic and different things that are happening there. And then finally, watches and warnings. Uh, if there's a warning that's happening on here, you can click on that and it'll bring up the text box of what's going on in that warning. So the hazardous weather outlook, this is something that our meteorologists will type up and just give a short narrative of what they think is going to happen with the severe weather and when it's most likely to occur. So with this example here, you can see uh, the tornado's large tail, the two inches are greater in diameter diameter and damaging winds above 70 miles per hour are all possible with this situation. The bottom, you'll see the spotter information statement. So it says spotter activation will likely be needed later this afternoon and evening. So <clears throat> we say that, but at the same time, we don't activate the spotters. This is a, a self spotter activation situation that we have in Southern Wisconsin. So if you want to go out storm spotting that day, that is up to you. If you have too much going on, then that's all right as well. But uh, that's a kind of a quick stop, one stop shop for information about whether or not we think it's a day where the spotters might, might want to go out and report information back to us. So just some of the things when it comes to awareness and preparedness, knowing whether or not today is going to be a severe weather day. The main first step is typically looking at the Storm Prediction Center's convective outlooks or the thunderstorm risk outlooks. They'll highlight areas where they think severe weather is going to occur. So this is just one example here. This was June uh, 15th from last year where moderate risk was happening in Southern Wisconsin. You can see uh, the different layers there for where it was more and more likely to have that bad weather occur. So the outlook, which I'll show in a little bit here, is the, the planning ahead stage is today a day you're gonna to need to be prepared. The watch comes out when things are getting a little bit closer. You still might not, may not have storms developing yet, but technically or typically within the next two to eight hours is when you can expect severe weather to potentially occur, or at least some thunderstorms. So the watch is just that next step to say, hey, be prepared, something could be coming your way. The warning, that's the time to take action. So that's when you need to be in your shelter or in a safe spot, at least inside, if uh, that storm is headed for your location. So know the difference between these and uh, particularly the watch versus warning. A lot of people get those two confused because they both start with WA. And uh, what happens is when the watch gets issued, while that watch is issued, we'll put warnings out as well. So you can have both a watch and a warning out at the same time uh, with a lot of these weather events. So also be aware that there are some situations where we might skip the watch or we might not have a watch that ever gets issued. So you might just have the outlook and then go straight to a warning when those storms pop up. From the Storm Prediction Center, spc.noaa.gov, they're the ones that are our national experts on severe weather. So they... Number one, do these forecasts for where they think severe weather is going to occur and how widespread it's going to be or how uh, impactful that severe weather might be as well. And they also are the ones that issue the severe thunderstorm watches and tornado watches. We do coordinate with them to pick what counties it, the watch is going to be in. And 
sometimes there's a debate about whether or not it should be a severe thunderstorm watch or a tornado watch. So we'll we'll do that all together with all the other weather service offices that are included on that that call. So the most likely thing that you're going to see are these outlooks. So where it goes from a one to five, the marginal risk, the slight risk, the enhanced risk, moderate and high. So um, just when it comes to these, the higher up on the scale you go, the more widespread or potentially dangerous the severe weather is going to be. It doesn't mean you can't get dangerous severe weather with some of these lighter, the the lower down on the scale um, forecasts, but uh, a little bit more luck, likely to be a, a widespread event when you get up to the, the moderate or high risk stage. So for a marginal risk, typically we'll not get into a, a watch in those situations just don't have the environmental factors there to, to get the correct storms or the typical storms that produce widespread severe damage. When it comes to the slight risk and above, that's typically when we're starting to concern get concerned about whether or not we're gonna have a, a severe thunderstorm watch or tornado watch later that day. Maybe the confidence just isn't there as much that there's gonna be a really bad severe weather event. Um, but typically when we see that we're in a slight risk you know, we're doing our own forecasting on top of it, but when we see that, that's kind of a clue to say, hey, we need to be looking at staffing and what we're going to be doing for this event. Enhanced risk, again, just a little bit more widespread, a uh, little bit more dangerous or more damage potentially occurring for those events. Moderate risks, these are once a season or maybe once a year that we get into a moderate risk. <clears throat> and then after that, the high risk is tornado outbreak type day, which is very rare for us to get around here. So as I mentioned before, some people get the watch versus warning confused. Just know that the, when the watch gets issued, it's time to get prepared. The warning, that means it's taking action. There is some terminology that comes out when it comes to the watches and warnings called particularly dangerous situations or PDS watches and warnings. These are for those moderate and high risk days when you could have a tornado outbreak or you might have a squall line that's gonna come through with 80 mile per hour winds or higher going on. So we ramp up our, our wording and everything that we're saying about how bad the situation might be in these PDS uh, situations. With our warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, our criteria is 58 miles per hour for the wind or higher, and then quarter size hail or larger for uh, the hail. So there's no lightning aspect to this and there's no heavy rainfall potential that goes into deciding whether or not we have a warning. So it's just the winds or the hail and those are our thresholds. If we're expecting to get to that, that's when we issue our warnings. Tornado warnings, it's either gonna be issued based off of what we're seeing on radar or if somebody has reported that uh, rotation or that tornado on the ground to us. Sometimes it might be a funnel cloud that's enough to, to get us to, to issue something. So we really rely on the reports from the spotters with these to, as particularly in real time so that we can put those reports into the warning because people really react to hearing that, hey, somebody's actually seen a tornado here by Fort Atkinson. Uh, if I'm in Hebron or Rome or Palmyra, I should be in my basement or my shelter. So. Um, just know how valuable that information is coming from the storm spotters to help us with these warnings and just keeping people safe. When it comes to the warnings, we have three different levels that we go to with them. So almost every single tornado warning, severe thunderstorm warning, or flash flood warning that's issued is a base level of those. So typical 60 mile per hour winds, golf ball size hail. We uh, probably see some radar rotation, but uh, the impacts might be minimal, it might just be like a brief spin up or something like that. Considerable, you're getting to that next level and you're gonna hear the wording come up quite a bit. So much more likely that people could be injured or that this is a deadly type situation. So when we get to this, we can, we can do this without knowing that that tornado is actually on the ground. Uh, it's more so what we're seeing on radar that's causing us to be concerned at a unusual level. The catastrophic or destructive level, this is three out of three, the, the highest scenario, which um, it's it's not, it's, it's gonna, it's the highest level of concern that we have. And you're gonna hear things like tornado emergency 
uh, basically a big wedge tornado on the western side of a city that's about to take it out. Um, we've never, in uh, southern Wisconsin at least, gone to level two or three here, the considerable or destructive slash catastrophic level. So uh, hopefully we're able to continue that. But know that there are these different levels that occur when it comes to tornadoes, tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, and flash flood warnings. So what triggers the wireless emergency alerts for each of these? So all tornado warnings will trigger your, your phones to go off. For the severe thunderstorm warnings, we have to be at the highest level. We've got to be at that third level where the winds are going to be 80 mile per hour or higher or uh, baseball size hail or larger. For flash flooding, it's the second of the three levels, the considerable tags. So we might have issued our first flash flood warnings and then things are starting to get out of hand. So uh, we have to ramp it up a little bit and we go to this next level. Snow squall warnings, this will be most of them. If uh, we do get some squalls overnight, we wouldn't uh, have the wireless emergency alerts triggered, but most of ours, uh, we, we expect that we would have the wireless emergency alerts go off for this. So that's the end of section two. Thank you very much. And we'll see you in section three.